Welcome to MetaThrive's weekly update. I'm Laura. And I'm Nader. And today we're introducing Matthew Cote. And he's going to tell you a little bit about the fragrance room. Greetings. <laughs> My name is Matt Cote. I'm here on behalf of My Strain Guide. We've put together a fragrance wheel to kind of help you understand the fragrances behind your strain. So I know a lot of the times you come in the dispensary, you'll just start opening these jars and smelling the fragrance and somewhat selecting your strain from that knowledge. Aside from just indigo and sativa, there is a way to categorize these strains based on the fragrances. And these fragrances are composed of compounds called terpenes or terpenoids once they become oxidized and go into the air. So the terpene compound in this is not oxidized, and once it is oxidized, that's what you smell in the air as a gas. This concept of terpenes has been around for a while, and I wanted to really help patients understand what they're buying and how the terpenes can enhance the medical qualities of their strains. So you can see all these different terpenes here contain in essential oils. Essential oils are the distilled terpenes or fragrance compounds from all plants. Many, many plants have these terpenes, and they don't just have one, they'll have many of them. For instance, the cannabis plant is known to have between 120 different ones. Not at one time, but with all the variation in the strains, there are a considerable amount of terpenes contained in it. So you can get a great amount of variety from just this one plant by selecting the fragrance and understanding what you're smelling when you smell it. So rather than just kind of guessing that you smell bergamot or myrrh or lavender, you can start to smell lavender or smell anise and know what it smells like and then start to look for that when you smell these different strains. Now you might be asking yourself why you want to do that and why you really care about anise or eucalyptol or eucalyptus fragrance. That's why I devised the fragrance wheel. <laughs> the fragrance wheel takes all the science behind the terpene. So there's aromatherapists out there that have been really using these fragrances to help with yoga, to help with massages, anything that really kind of immerses you and takes you out of your sickness, takes you out of your ailment and kind of brings you to this environment where you're not concentrated on your pain or anything. You just focus on this fragrance and the fragrance physically changes the chemicals in your brain to help you feel better, to help you feel elated, to help you remove depression, to remove inflammation. There's a lot of variation. Again, there are very many terpenes, so trying a lot is great. So back to the fragrance and how you can use this. I've included a lot of the main words that you'd be using to describe cannabis. A lot of people will describe wine in the same kind of way, but it's more so about flavor and taste and where, where we are you know, vaporizing so you can taste it in that regard. But our main focus is smelling the fragrance because you are using that to decide which strain you want. So here are all the different fragrance choice adjectives you could be using to describe your cannabis. So the next time you sit down, you crack open your jar and you take a big whiff. You can even crack the bud to release more terpenes because again, when they oxidize and turn to terpenoids, this happens at a very rapid pace. That's why the cannabis has such a potent fragrance. So you might want to crack it open, make that fragrance potent again, and then start going through there and kind of conceptualizing the fragrances you experience. So you can start way at the bottom where there's floral and spicy kind of broad view descriptives and then step out and as you step out you'll get more descriptive and more sharp with your descriptions and you really assess the value of it in a medical standpoint beyond just cannabinoids. The fascinating aspect of terpenes is that they're composed of the same com chemical components as cannabinoids. So you can consider terpenes a more simplistic version of a cannabinoid. In the same way that a cannabinoid is medical, so are terpenes. So let's take an example here. We'll go from Eucalyptus, say we'll say, we'll smell this fragrance, we'll smell the strain, and we'll say, you know, it really smells like eucalyptus. I don't know why I feel that way, but I, it gives me that same tingly sensation as the last time I smoked eucalyptus, whenever that might be. You look at these two dots, these signify the physical compounds inside eucalyptus. So instead of just saying eucalyptus, you can then step forward and go, well, according to these two colors, we have pinene and eucalyptol. Don't get caught up on the words, it kind of is science heavy, but it's really just to help you visualize and conceptualize what you're smelling, because if you don't understand it, you're not going to be able to use it. And the whole idea is to use this knowledge. 
So go to these colors, read piney, read eucalyptol, and know that eucalyptol kind of, you know, the word kind of gives it away is in eucalyptus. When they first started distilling these back in the day, they really just wanted to apply easy names for the scientists to remember. So they just said, well, since eucalyptus is so, has so much eucalyptol, let's just call this compound eucalyptol. Other people call it 1-8-cineol, but that's like different measurements, you know, like metrics versus inches. So we don't really need that. But eucalyptol is the thing you should remember so that you can ask about, can I buy a strain that's eucalyptus scented? And your bud tender can hopefully find that because they have such a super experience with the fragrances, with these strains. And then they'll say, why do you want this medication? Why do you want eucalyptus to treat yourself? Eucalyptus within itself has a series of benefits that are medicinal, not in conjunction with cannabinoids, but separate from them. So now you know about terpenes and you want to know how you can implement this knowledge. Well, the next time you come into a fine establishment like Many Thrive, step up to the counter with confidence and know that you're looking for strains that smell a certain way, not just indica or sativa. So don't come in and say, I want an indica, because it's very, very general now. We have more specifics and more ways of knowing how to medicate and how to help you if you know the information you're looking for. So let's say you want a eucalyptus scented fragrance or a strain that will help you in this way. You'll come in and you'll open the jar and just take a whip. And just know that you'll feel the sensation, you'll feel that very quintessential feeling you get when you smell eucalyptus. It really clears out your sinuses. If you've ever had a Vicks vapor rub, the active ingredients come from eucalyptus. So you smell the strain, recognize the terpene, and then say you want that because you know that this strain now has those benefits we listed earlier in the terpene chart. If you say you don't find a strain that smells that way, and say you want the best you could have gotten was a sativa dominant. You couldn't really find a sativa in general. You wanted that in the beginning. There's, you don't have to be worried, and you can even still control the way that strain is going to affect you. So by taking the strain, you sit down at home, and you open your trustworthy essential oil. You open it up, and right before you medicate, just take a whiff of it. And don't put it on your skin. This is highly concentrated, so it can really make you break out in a rash if you put it on there. If you do want to use it topically, I suggest putting it in some hemp oil or some olive oil, just something to really dilute it so that it's not as concentrated and not as agitated. So you'll sniff it, you can put this in your vaporizer, you can put this in any contraption you use, and then just expose yourself to the terpene, even leave the bottle open, and then smoke as you would normally, vaporize as you would normally, and you'll feel the difference. You'll actually feel these compounds interacting with each other and acting in synergy to benefit you in health and just for better, enjoying the cannabis. And so next time you come in, keep this in mind. I know Medithrive is going to donate generously towards my ACE lecture, so you can get more exposure, ask more questions, really learn about these terpenes and get comfortable with it. Because it's really not about just having a bunch of information that you cannot use. If you have questions, put comments up on YouTube, we'll be glad to answer them. And then start exploring this concept because it really is beneficial. Even if you're not have access to a place like a dispensary, any strain, you could smell it and know what the properties are because these terpenes are formed in the trichome alongside these cannabinoids. So anything happening in this cannabis is all in the trichome. So these things are formed at the same time as THC, at the same time as CBD. So the fragrances are kind of indicative of what terpenes and what cannabinoids are there simply because they are all formed at the same time. So the next time you come in, come in with confidence, come in with terpenes in your mind, and really Treat yourself and be sensible about medicinal. <laughs>
So use that information and get medicated. Well, that's it for this week's update with MetaTribe, and thanks for joining us. See you next week.